Well, there have been 21 different locations to host the Grey Cup. Today marks number 22, Mosaic Stadium, officially ready for the 109th Grey Cup. Of course, Regina has hosted it three times before this, but never at this absolutely beautiful facility where already some of these 33,000 fans have started coming through the doors. And you know what the best part about Ryder fans is? Their team's not even in the Grey Cup. And look at all the sea of green currently coming through those gates. Well, again, Wednesday night we did, they launched the festival and it was a jammed like literally jammed to the Raptors yeah the uh, Ryder Nation showed up in, with great passion and enthusiasm they've got 1150 volunteers and they're just like rocking the city it's been amazing I have to give you a formal introduction now I guess we're just chatting obviously and then we come up on camera but ladies and gentlemen the 14th Commissioner of the CFL Mr. Randy Ambrosi and let's start with being back here in Regina and you and I were saying this I mean it's almost warm here today the Sun has finally come out I mean, we're looking at minus four around game time. This is remarkable for Regina at the end of November. Well, it is, and when you consider that two weeks ago today, minus 30, and uh, it was looking a little daunting, and you're gonna like, oh my goodness, what's it gonna look like? But the players will love this. This is gonna be a fast track. It's it's dry, it's clean, and the and it's the right temperature, especially the big guys. The big guys are gonna love this, because you can just, I mean, this is when they're at their best, of course. So yeah, you just couldn't ask for a better situation. I told our producer we could literally have a 20-minute conversation about this CFL season, the first full season post-COVID, and there were so many tremendous things. I look at the crowd in BC, for one, and I thought to myself, watching that Western final, even watching the opening game and what Amar Dolman has done, because you and I, I think, sit up here and we have the same conversation each and every year. How do we reignite the passion for football in these big markets? When you look at what the Lions have done, do you think that this is possible for a city like Toronto? Oh, I, I do. And in fact, Katie, what's interesting to me is it's not just, look, what Amar has done in BC is just first class all the way. It really is. And they are on a tear. But Montreal had a real strong season as well. You know, big, big, uh, big lift in season ticket sales, big lift in overall ticket sales. Um, there's a really good leadership team with Mario Cicchini and Danny Machocha. They got a good football team and they, they showed that. And, and Toronto, look what, what Mike Clements has done, build a really good football team, build, they got a, you know, Coach Dinwiddie, build a good product. They're doing all the right things and they've also seen an improvement in their ticket sales. Look, I think our major market story is actually now starting to turn in our favor and I expect big things from our major markets in the coming years. Okay, let's talk about a smaller market now that actually doesn't exist and it would be a 10-team league if we could finally get going on the, the East Coast. We were mentioning earlier that we want to start a GoFundMe to build a stadium out East because we know, you and I were both at Touchdown Atlantic, the fans were incredible. I mean, it was 10,000 strong and you know it would fly there but really the stumbling block continues to be not having a venue is it not no it, it is but Kate there's even positive conversations there I'm gonna go back next week and uh, and start a conversation where we really engage uh, Atlantic Canadians rather you know rather than a Tor Toronto commissioner flying in and telling them what we want I want to go and ask them how how what do they want and how can we help them I think there's a solution there. I just, we're gonna have to be focused. We're gonna have to work hard at it, but it is an amazing region. Great college football, Phenomenal. Really, really good football culture. So we need to get our 10th team. Atlanta, Canada looks like a great destination and starting tomorrow morning, well, maybe tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> I was gonna say, give right? yourself 24, yeah, 24 hours, hours here. So let's, okay, m Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning you get to work, work again. on it. You know what, when you look at this, the state of the league and everything that it's done, it, in some areas, it's definitely moving in the right direction. And we hear so much about genius sports. And we look at the numbers that is being spent into genius sports. And I don't think a lot of us understand the tangible results right away. And I love what Dutch said yesterday at Grey Cup Saturday, you gotta spend money to make money. Uh, how has that partnership gone so far? Yeah, it's been a great success and Kate this is that phase that's not particularly sexy because essentially what they're doing is building a foundation so it's all based on what we call marketable fans so eventually you want to build this massive this massive ecosystem of fans who give you permission to be in contact with him with with us that that we learn a lot about them so we know Kate you're not exactly the same fan as Darren is for example so you like the bombers and we're gonna send you more more stuff on bombers Darren likes the Argos we're gonna send him more stuff on the Argos we're gonna we're gonna learn how to how to um, we're gonna learn how to be a good be a good partner with our fans 
but you got to build that foundation. It's like a, it's like a development. The first phase is they dig a lot of holes. It doesn't look doesn't look sexy, but you got to build that foundation. And Genius has been phenomenal getting that foundation set. When we're talking about numbers and fans, there are fans south of the border as well. How are the ongoing TV talks south of the border? Yeah, they've been really positive. We you know we don't have an announcement to make today, but we have some really good conversations that are underway right now, and we expect to have some news in the not too distant future. That's fantastic. And finally, I loved what you said at your breakfast too about going the Netflix angle of F1 Drive to Survive, yeah. for example, a phenomenal show showcasing players. And I truly think that's one of the great things of the CFL. We've already showed some features today on Dalton showing the running back, a little Mike O'Shea, AJ Olette. Uh, how plausible is that getting a little more storytelling into this league? Well, of course, we had the QEW series, Kate, that that's already got, been done. We have a couple of other projects underway because it is about the stories. It's about telling telling the stories of these great athletes. So we've got and we got a few interesting projects in the in the hopper. I think we're going to get we're going to make that our second our second product is is all the stories about our people to complement the game. We got some good stuff uh, in the hopper. Just promise me one thing, you won't do a behind the scenes on the panel. No one needs to see that and I don't want to get fired. Well, I have been I've been advocating for that seriously. <laughs> and in fact, I saw the guys at breakfast this morning and I said, you know, I really like when you kind of poke at them a little I bit. Do. So keep up the good I work. I go hard at them, <laughs> don't too, I, Commissioner? Uh, congratulations on having the Grey Cup back in Regina. It's absolutely phenomenal back here. We couldn't have asked for better weather. And once again, congratulations on the first full season post-COVID. Thanks, Kate.